Before we dive in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more deep dive content on firearms, tactics, and cutting edge military tech. The world of infantry small arms is going through a quiet revolution. After decades of relying on the tried and true 5.56 NATO and 7.62 NATO cartridges, the US military has made a groundbreaking move officially adopting the 6.850 on-M round, also known in the civilian world as the .277 SIG Fury. This isn't just a new bullet. It's a fundamental shift in how the modern soldier fights, how engagements unfold, and how battlefield superiority is achieved. This change isn't about small upgrades or incremental tweaks. It represents a total reset in how we think about small arms firepower. While many experts and shooters have spent years debating the merits of lightweight, high velocity rounds versus heavier, harder hitting ones, the military has effectively tossed out the old playbook. The 6.8 X50 Onum round isn't a compromise. It's a new direction entirely offering power, range, and versatility in a way that neither 5.56 nor 7.62 could consistently deliver in modern warfare. So what exactly is this new cartridge? The 6.8 X50 Onu fires a 140 grain projectile at approximately 3,000 feet per second, generating around 2,800 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. That's significantly more than either 5.56 or 7.62. But what really sets it apart is its operating pressure, an astonishing 80,000 PCI. By comparison, most conventional rifle cartridges top out around 60 000. To withstand that level of pressure, the 6.850 Onum uses a hybrid case with a steel base and a brass body. This innovative construction allows for extreme performance without sacrificing reliability or safety. Why make such a drastic change? The answer lies in real-world battlefield experience. In recent conflicts, it became increasingly clear that 5.56 NATO was no longer adequate against modern threats. Opponents wearing advanced body armor could often take multiple center mass hits from 5.56 and remain in the fight. That's not a failure of marksmanship, it's a failure of terminal ballistics. Meanwhile, 7.62 NATO offered better stopping power but came with drawbacks. Heavier recoil, increased weight per round, and reduced ammo capacity for the average soldier. The military needed something new, something that could defeat modern body armor at extended ranges, deliver energy far beyond 300 meters, and still remain manageable for the average infantryman. That's where 6.8 X50 Onem comes in. It punches through plates beyond 600 meters, retains lethal energy at even longer distances, and despite being more powerful, is still controllable with proper training. This isn't just about hitting harder, it's about hitting smarter. With 5.56, a squad spotting movement at 500 meters would often resort to suppressive fire, hoping to maneuver into position. But with 6.850 on them, they can take that shot confidently, knowing it will hit with authority. That transforms the mindset on the ground. Instead of relying on volume to suppress, soldiers are trained to rely on precision, making every round count. It's no longer about who can throw more lead, it's about who can land the right shot first. To better understand where 6.850 Onem sits in relation to traditional rounds, consider this. The standard 5.56 NATO fires a 62 grain bullet with a round one 300 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, and soldiers can typically carry 210 rounds across seven magazines. 7.62 NATO fires a 147 grain bullet with around 2,480 foot-pounds of energy, but each round is heavier and bulkier. 
With 6.850 on them, you get around about the same weight as 7.62, roughly 25 grams, but delivering nearly two. 800 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. It does kick more than 5.56, but remains manageable for a trained shooter. Even though new platforms like the M7 rifle hold fewer rounds, typically 20 to 25 per magazine each round, carries far more fight stopping potential. This means soldiers don't need to spray and pray. They can fire fewer shots with greater confidence in each one's effectiveness. And when range matters, 5.56 loses energy fast after 300 meters. 7.62 can hold its own out to 800, but 6.850 on him remains lethal well past 600 meters and stays supersonic even farther, maintaining flat trajectories and terminal energy where other rounds begin to falter. But a new cartridge also requires new platforms. That's why the U.S. military is fielding two new weapons alongside 6.850 on M. First, there's the M7 rifle, which will replace the M4 alone in frontline roles. It uses a short-stroke gas piston system crucial for managing the 80,000 PI pressures and comes standard with an integrated suppressor. Its ergonomics will be familiar to anyone trained on the AR platform easing the transition for troops. Then there's the MAN-250 automatic rifle, replacing the M249 saw. It's lighter, incorporates built-in recoil mitigation systems, and can deliver 6.850 on them fire out past 600 meters with enough energy to penetrate armor. This makes it a true precision support weapon, not just a suppressive tool. The military isn't stopping at hardware training itself is being reimagined. Live fire ranges are being extended out to 1,000 meters or more. Troops are now trained in long-range marksmanship, ballistic computing, and data-driven targeting. The introduction of the XM-157 Fire Control Optic marks another leap forward. This isn't just a scope, it's a mini ballistic computer. It calculates range, drop, wind, and environmental conditions in real time. When paired with the ballistics of 6.850 on him, it massively increases hit probability at long distances, even under stress. Yes, soldiers now carry fewer rounds, and yes, the recoil is higher. But each of those rounds is more effective. And when soldiers see what one well-placed 6.850 on them round can do to a steel plate at 700 meters, it changes their confidence. That kind of psychological edge matters. It turns hesitation into initiative, and initiative wins fights. On the civilian side, the 6.8x50 on them is already making waves as the 277 Sig Fury. For hunters, long-range shooters, and gear enthusiasts, it's a dream round. It delivers flat shooting trajectories, high ballistic coefficients, and devastating terminal performance beyond 1,000 yards. For big game hunting, elk, moose, large boar, it checks all the boxes. But there's a catch, cost. The hybrid case design makes manufacturing more complex and expensive. Reloading is technically possible, but requires specialized tools and processes due to the steel base. Still, as military adoption increases and production scales up, we can expect civilian costs to drop and rifle availability to grow. More platforms will be chambered in, 277 Fury. More ammo types will hit the shelves. And if the hybrid case technology proves scalable, it could revolutionize ammunition design for decades to come applying similar high pressure. High performance characteristics to older calibers like the 308 or 243. Some critics have raised concerns about the weight of the round or claimed it's just reinventing old ideas. But that doesn't hold up. The 6.850 on them isn't just a rebranded .270. It's a modern, high-pressure cartridge 
built to solve real problems encountered in recent combat, punching through advanced body armor, extending effective range, and minimizing the number of rounds needed to end a firefight. This isn't just the military chasing a shiny new toy. It's a measured, data-driven response to how the nature of warfare is changing. It's about giving troops the overmatch they need to survive and win in peer-to-peer -peer combat environments. The adoption of 6.850 on them may be the first domino in a broader transformation of military small arms. It remains to be seen how NATO will respond. For decades, logistics and standardization have kept Allied forces united around the 5.56 NATO cartridge. But this new hybrid design, with its unique pressure requirements and manufacturing needs, breaks with that model. Other countries may either stick with legacy systems or start developing their own high-pressure cartridges. Whether 6.850 on them becomes the new standard or not, one thing is certain, it represents a turning point. It changes how soldiers shoot, how they train, how they move, and how they fight. It's not just about a new round, it's about redefining what's possible in infantry combat. So, is this the final answer for the future of small arms? Or just the first step towards something even more advanced? Only time will tell, but for now, the game has changed. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to Alpha Gun Review for more in-depth analysis on firearms, ballistics, and the future of combat tech. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next one.